Okay, how's everybody doing this evening? December 18th, 2024 here in Carlsbad, California. And as you can see, we got a little bit of fog rolling in this evening. Um, so it's, a, it's kind of a spooky evening. So what I want to talk about tonight is I want to talk about if Bitcoin has a fatal flaw uh, built into the Bitcoin uh, protocol. And um, what I mean by the fatal flaw is um, I, I've thought about Bitcoin a lot because I'm tr always trying to think of ways that Bitcoin could be um, it could be hacked or somehow it could uh, become obsolete or somehow it could be uh, something that falls apart. You know, uh, Warren Buffett thinks Bitcoin's going to zero. He never gives any analysis behind that, but he just thinks it's going to zero. Anybody quoting Warren Buffett in these days, they need to stop it. Warren Buffett's almost 100 years old. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's been wrong. All he's ever done is bought some really basic companies based on the fact that they had um, pretty good cash flow and that they were undervalued when he bought them. And that's it. But Warren Buffett is no hero. He's no, he's nobody. He's got somebody that had a, had a good connection to money and he was able to put it in the right spots at the right time with a lot of, with a, buying a lot, a lot of, and controlling that particular stock and making a lot of money on it. He didn't do anything unique. Like uh, I think Elon Musk says he's, he kind of somebody sits around and studies balance sheets all day long not very exciting and you know compared to a guy like musk who's brought a lot of technology into the lives of people and better their lives like i say the tesla car is an innovation that you know if, if you can if you, if you it's probably a more superior car than a combustion motor simply because of all the um, the things going on with a combustion motor you, mean you got oil you got gasoline radiator fluid uh, all the fluids that are associated with it, the fact that it makes, uh, it, it, it pollutes. I mean, the, the, the Tesla car, the electric car, is actually probably a superior car to, than a, a, a regular car that we, most of us drive. And the other thing people don't account for with the Tesla car is when he gets all these cars online, think of the information he's going to be able to gather on everybody. So as these cars are driving around, uh, they're going to know where you go, what you did. It's all going to be part of, uh, you know, so it's going to be on a database someplace. And all this information, all your habits and everything are just going to be there. How much, how valuable will that be for Elon Musk and Tesla when they really literally have every every car being driven and have a, a um, have the history and the data on all the information? It's almost like, you know, Facebook with your ability to gather all the information they gather on you so they can you, they know who your friends are they know where you used to live they know what you like and don't like you know what color you like if you're if you like blue over red because of you know your past history well you got the same thing now with cars these cars are going to go online and they're just going to be able to measure everything you do in every place you go so lots of luck committing crimes or anything because they're going to know if you drove to a particular place and what happened and it's it's, it's overwhelming you know but this is something that technology that is both beneficial to us People love it, but at the same time, it's also going to uh, make our lives uh, where you're going to not be able to get, get away with as much or you're going to be more exposed for anything you do. So back to Bitcoin and if it does have a fatal flaw. So I think about this stuff all the time um, because I, I like Bitcoin. I invest in Bitcoin. And, of course, I hate to lose money and I don't want to see Bitcoin blow up. And I'm just thinking all the time, you know, is it possibly Bitcoin could blow up? And one of the things that's always you know maybe been an issue is the fact that it has a built-in flaw and the built-in flaw is that uh, Satoshi Nakamoto has over a million Bitcoin in his accounts so let's say that somebody was able to through quantum computing or somehow some supercomputer able to uh, reverse engineer the address and um, and be able to go back and hack those accounts and get th that Bitcoin out would that automatically kill the price of Bitcoin because somebody was able to uh, with quantum comp computing or or some supercomputer be able to uh, destroy Bitcoin or destroy the Bitcoin price because they're able to get a hold of these million Bitcoin and I thought about that quite a bit until I was I was researching a little bit about it and it doesn't really it's not really a it, it, I, you know don't worry about it and the reason you don't have to worry about it is simply because this is so brilliantly designed i can't believe it was done by a human being i really i really seriously don't believe it was done by a human being that's how brilliantly bitcoin was designed and and the put together yeah i just think it had to be divinely inspired there's just no way a human being thought this thing out and thought this clearly so many years ago so that 
today you've got people like Michael Saylor and companies, billions and billions of dollars being thrown at this thing, and nobody really has a way to bring it down. And nobody really has a way to, um, I mean, it's, it's universal. It, you know, had, like I say, it doesn't have a, an inventor. It doesn't have any, any particular nationality or country or politics or anything like that associated with it. It's, it's completely blind to all that stuff. And with Satoshi and the million tokens he has, those are spread out over about 20, I think about 22,000 accounts. So they have as little as like 50 Bitcoin. So a Satoshi account could have, one of Satoshi's 22,000 accounts could have 50 or 60 Bitcoin in it, or 10 Bitcoin or 20 Bitcoin. So you'd literally have to hack 22,000 accounts to get the, the, the Satoshi uh, Bitcoin away. So the, the thought that Natoshi's Bitcoin could ever affect this market are probably so, something close to zero, simply because of the way it's distributed on over 22,000 accounts. So it's so smallly put in all these accounts, but yet it's still this incredible base of Bitcoin that is out there, but nobody can access it. That's why I say this is so brilli brilliantly, brilliantly designed, because it's out there. It affects the market because they're, you know, they're they're out there. Nobody's can. They're always they're going to be out part of a part of the Bitcoin um, number of tokens outstanding. But it, they're never going to come to market. They're never going to be sold. They're just there, and nobody can hack them or nobody can get to them. That is just the most brilliant thing I've ever thought you could ever possibly think of, you know. And that just gives Bitcoin this incredible stake of a million Bitcoin that are completely inaccessible, uh, but they're out there, you know. And, they're, and you can't get to them. You'll never be able to get to them, never be able to hack them. So no, I don't think it, it does have a fatal flaw, even though I've heard people argue that it, there's, there's flaws with it. I don't know what the flaws would be with Bitcoin. I think about it all the time. If you have a flaw for Bitcoin, you know, put it in the comments because I, I don't know what it is. I think Bitcoin's here to stay for a long time. I think Bitcoin's probably one of the most brilliant uh, pieces of engineering that we've ever seen. It, it has so much well thought out thing, uh, you know, thought, as far as um, being an, uh, uh, an asset, as far as being uh, something that uh, is uh, is digital and something that uh, it can be used any place in the world, Some, something that can transcend um, borders, transcend countries, and go from from any place in the air and be trans. Uh, me personally, I think the gold and silver market are dead. And I think all currencies are dead. I think the only thing left is Bitcoin. It's the superior asset. And I think if you really listen to Michael Saylor, I think he says these things. And I think a lot of people still think, oh, Bitcoin's probably uh, too high. You can't buy Bitcoin. In fact, I, I heard somebody this afternoon use the, the, the old saying, hey, my mother was asking me about Bitcoin. So if your mother's asking you about Bitcoin, you better bet that the price is is already exhausted and you can't it's not going to go up much higher because it's everybody knows about it and it's so well exposed that yeah you know nobody's ever going to buy it over a hundred thousand dollars i don't think that's the case i think bitcoin is probably going to a million very soon probably five ten million you know within the next few years so yeah it's not too early to buy bitcoin or not too late to buy bitcoin in fact i think we're real still still early even though bitcoin you know people own bitcoin at, at nothing some people own bitcoin a little bit of nothing a few dollars but you know Buying Bitcoin at a few dollars is probably a hundred times more um, more risky than buying it today at a hundred thousand dollars. Because today at a hundred thousand dollars, you've got you know major players, BlackRock and all these asset managers around the world that are involved in it. And I knew personally that when Bitcoin was going to be uh, on an ETF and uh, bought by asset managers like uh, like BlackRock. When that happened about a year ago, over a year ago, I knew Bitcoin was here to stay. And I also knew Bitcoin was going to be something that was going to be, uh, um, it was going to take over the asset market. I knew that. I knew that a year ago when, when, when I saw that happen. Uh, you know, they were playing around with it a little bit. They kind of said it was going to go start trading, and then it did, and then it did, and they played around with it a little bit. But once it hit, the, started trading, I said, this is over with. Bitcoin's just going to swallow everything up, and that's exactly what's happening. And, I, you know, as far as the fatal flaws are concerned, I have yet to find one. And I have yet to read or hear anybody else come up with anything that that would, to me, uh, cause me to concern as far as if Bitcoin has, you know, anybody can uh, could bring it down, destroy it, or, or make it worth zero, like uh, B Buffett says. I mean, Buffett, he just needs to go away. The guy's just, uh, he's lost his mind. I appreciate you watching. Thank you.